But Dr. Leticia Adlerapia is the Executive Director of the National Population Council. She's joining me for a conversation. Thank you, Doc, for joining us. It's beginning to sound like a broken record as we continue to speak about the causes of teenage pregnancy. From where you sit as a Population Council, how have we failed at dealing with it for it not to reach the levels we are seeing now? Well, uh, good afternoon to your viewers and listeners, and thanks for the opportunity once again. Yes, it sounds like a broken record, but then you have to keep talking about something that is important uh, until it, 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 uh, it really attracts the attention that it needs. You know, the, the, the teenage pregnancy, we, now we have a big issue on our hand. We are talking about LGBTQI. And we're talking about uh, so many people in LGBTQI and it's not good for the country. But teenage pregnancy is also in the same category. So how do we put it together? How do we put child marriage, teenage pregnancy, LGBTQI that is eating at the fabric of society together and, and, and address it comprehensively from all sides, from the religious, traditional, all, all angles? I don't think that we can pick and choose Anything that is in the way of national development should come, I mean, should, should have our attention, you know. Okay. So that is it. You know, Teenage Pregnancy and the National Population Council, we have the statistical service uh, giving us the data recently, and we are talking about population growth rate. But let me say something. Population growth rate is favorable and unfavorable to economic development depending on where, when, and how it takes place. Okay. And so if population growth rate is going to take place by teenage pregnancy, then it is very unfavorable for economic development. The hundred and so over thousand girls who got pregnant in a year are increasing our population by that number. Statistical service told us that the net increase where the 2.1 growth rate will be about 600,000, 600 plus thousand people. And so if all these 100,000 children have children, it means that they are contributing so much to the population growth. And like I said, it does not support economic development. Mm. That is just one, one angle of, uh, of it. Okay. What about unemployment? What about even NHIS bills? What about family uh, uh, bills, health bills, economic bills, so many other things, unemployment, crime, and all those things. Okay. So I think teenage pregnancy and, and all that we're talking about should really attract national attention okay. in addition to the LGBT. It should be on the same platform. And, and so it brings me to the question of how to deal with this. So are there, for example, adequate policies and frameworks that can help the National Population Council, for example, the religious bodies and other groups to attempt to sensitize the people so we bite down the numbers? You know, the issue is that everything is basically the same. The principles in, every, in public health are the same. It's the application that differs. So let's take a, a, a policy like COVID, for instance. What are we doing? Who are the stakeholders in COVID? We have the health sector, we have the media talking about COVID, and we have our individual responsibilities. We have religious people supporting us. So what are we doing? They are educating us about the science of COVID. And then as individuals, we are wearing our mask and keeping the social distancing and hand washing. That is my bit. Then what is the government doing? The government is, is, is having the screening uh, uh, centers scattered in the nation, bringing us the logistics and training staff to offer the service. The same thing. If we're talking about teenage pregnancy, then we should have the education as teenagers how to prevent ourselves, and then the society should support us. Government should have uh, uh, services for family planning, contraceptives, easily available, accessible for everybody, have trained people to offer the services as immunizationists, and then our churches should also support us with our virtues. Okay. You know, then our traditional leaders should also say that teenage pregnancy does not support good, 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 good values. So what are we going to do in our jurisdiction to make sure that this does not escalate? Places where child marriages are, can they come out and say child marriages are not supporting us develop socioeconomically? What are we going to do to abolish? Okay. It's a nation something. It's okay. a nationwide 
and every stakeholder has a role to play. So the National Population Council, we, we, we can even talk about incentives, mm -hmm. you know, moral incentives, financial incentives. What did we do when we wanted girls to go to school? We said, take your girl child to school. We said free compulsory ed ed education, and so women and girls could go to school. So can we say free family planning, free contraceptives, easily available, accessible, okay. as immunization is, that should be a national program. Okay. So the policies are there, but we have to operationalize them with the various stakeholders uh, doing their bit. I appreciate that you could join me, Dr. Adley Leticia Pia, there. She is the executive director of the National Population Council.